The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. At the first, I am not a bit of a little 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 bit of a Here's what the Crosley Poll found. For their own personal smoking enjoyment, independent tobacco experts again name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike first choice over any other brand. These experts know their business. Their overwhelming preference for Lucky Strike, we believe, has a direct relationship to the quality tobacco we purchase for Luckies and to the real, deep down smoking enjoyment you may expect from fine tobacco. And when these veteran tobacco experts Name Lucky Strike first choice for their own personal smoking enjoyment, then you know. LSMFT, LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. So smoke the smoke tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike. Remember, independent tobacco experts again name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike first choice over any other brand. <laughs> The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today is March 21st, so with spring officially here, let's go out to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills where we find Rochester doing the spring house cleaning. Well, I got the table dusted. <laughs> Quiet, Polly. Now I better go in the next room and... Uh-oh, I forgot to clean under the piano. Well, I'll just take my mop, reach under there, and swish it around. Hmm, it's amazing how so many things can collect under a piano in such a short time. Hmm, what's this? A newspaper, January 16th, 1943. And look at that headline. Jack Benny recaptures Guadalcanal. <laughs> 1943. That's the year I gave him that printing press for Christmas. <laughs> well, it's getting kind of late. I better go and see if Mr. Benny wants some lunch. Embrace me, my sweet embraceable you. Embrace me, you irrepressible you. Uh, just one look at you, my heart grew tipsy in me. <laughs> you and you alone bring out the gypsy in me. I love all the many times about you. Above all, above all, above all, uh, I want my arms about you. I hate to disturb him while he's counting his money. <laughs> well, I might as well go on and shake the dust out of this mop. I beg your pardon, Rochester. Huh? Would you mind shaking that mop in the other direction? You're getting dust on Mr. Coleman's petunias. Oh, I'm sorry, Sherwood. I hope I didn't dirty your windows. Oh, I don't think so. And besides, it doesn't matter. Mr. Coleman told me I didn't have to start the spring cleaning until tomorrow. He knew I was too excited to work today. Excited? Yes, haven't you heard? We won the Academy Award. <laughs> oh, yes. We weren't even invited. <laughs> But congratulations, Sherwood. Uh, thank you. Uh, would you like me to autograph your mop? <laughs> no, thanks. R R Rochester. Uh oh. I have to go now. And Sherwood, I want to tell you, I was very glad to hear the good news about Mr. Coleman winning the award. Uh, so was I. You know, that means another raise for me. A raise? Oh, yes. When he made Lost Horizon, he gave me a raise. Uh, when he made Random Harvest, he gave me another raise. The late George Apley didn't hurt the either. And now that he's made a double life, I've been catapulted into the upper bracket. <laughs> well, 
My salary stayed the same through Charlie's aunt to be or not to be, and George Washington slept here. <laughs> then he made the horn blows at midnight, and brother, can you spare a dime? <laughs> Coming, boss. Excuse me, Sherwood. I have to go in now. Uh, cheerio. Well, hello, boss. Would you like me to get you some lunch? Well, I don't know. What have we got, Rochester? I'll take a look in the, on the icebox. Well, let's see. We've got some cold boars, cheese blintzes, sour cream, bagel, and matzo balls. <laughs> boars, bagels, and matzo balls? Yeah, we had them left over from St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Oh, yes. Well, on second thought, Rochester, I'm not very hungry. You better eat something, boss. You know you have to speak at that club meeting tonight. Oh, I'll get something later, but I'm glad you reminded me about the meeting. I'm going in the den and jot down some more notes for my speech there. There's somebody at the back door. I'll get it. Embrace me, my sweet embraceable you. Embrace me, da-da-da-da. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Come on in. Wait, why'd you come around the back door? Well, now that the weather's so nice, I thought you'd be out in the patio relaxing. And, uh, say, Jack, why would you get this new Bendix? Oh, a few days ago. How come you noticed it so quickly? The last time I was here, you only had four of them. Well, they look nice, don't they, huh? Yeah, but don't you think you ought to put them in the living room? Washing machines in the living room? If people pay you a quarter to use them, you can at least make them comfortable. <laughs> Mary, when you give them soap free, they're happy. They don't care. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Would you like me to fix you a sandwich or something? No, thanks, Rochester. I'm not hungry. I don't know what it is, but today I haven't any appetite at all. Oh, I guess it's the time of the year. Yeah. Spring. There's something in the air that seems to... Oh, gosh, I don't know. Isn't that funny, Mary? I've been feeling the same way. But then it's only natural, you know. In the spring, a young man's fancy... Lightly turns to thought that... Isn't that cute, Mary? Rochester tipped out of the room so... So we could be alone. <laughs> well, he could tiptoe back in again and get that glint out of your eye. <laughs> it's not a glint, it's that Oxidol sparkle. <laughs> embrace me, my sweet embrace, of Jack. Yeah. <laughs> embrace me, you will replace, of Jack, what? look at Polly. She's singing and counting her birdseed. That's funny. <laughs> I wonder where she picked that up. Say, Mary, you sure you don't want any lunch? No, Jack. The reason I came over today is to ask you if you'd like to take me... Oh, pardon me, Mary. There's someone at the door. Yes? Is this 700 North Rexford? Yes, yes. Well, I came over to... Oh, yes, yes, of course. Come right in. Go right through the kitchen and use the one on the end. It's brand new. <laughs> and you'll find soap in the barrel. <laughs> now, what were you saying, Mary? I said... <laughs> I said the reason I came over today is to ask you if you'd like to go to a preview with me tonight. Tonight? Oh, gosh, Mary, I'd love to, but I have to make a very important speech at a club meeting. It's an organization here in Beverly Hills, and they invited me to be the guest speaker. Oh, so I won't be able to take you to the preview tonight. Oh, that's all right, Jack. I guess I'll just have to go with your own power. Well, you should have let me know sooner. But say, maybe I can take you. I'll call the club. You touch that phone and I'll break your arm. <laughs> well, you had a lot of nerve leading me on like that. Well, when did you make this date with her own power? Well, he asked me last night when I met him at the Academy Award ceremonies. Oh. And, Jack, you should have been there. When Ronald Coleman was called up on the stage to receive the Oscar, he made a beautiful speech. And he was so gracious and modest. Well, Mary, that's as it should be. I remember I was modest when, when I got the Oscar. What? I can still see that headline. Jack Benny wins Academy Award. Jack, when was that? The year I gave him that printing press for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would have been elected president, too, but I ran out of ink. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad Ronnie won it. Come in! Oh, it's you, Dennis. Come on in, sit down. I can't stay, Mr. Benny. I just came over because I've got something very important to talk to you about. To me? Well, kid, if you have anything on your mind, say it. But this is confidential. Can we talk in the other room? 
Oh, sure, sure. Excuse us, Mary. Oh, that's all right. She can come along. <laughs> but, Dennis, you said it was confidential. If it's confidential, it should be between two people. Oh, then you and Mary go in the other room, and I'll stay here. <laughs> okay, but Dennis, stop mixing me up. You came in to tell me something. Now, what is it? Well, I don't know how to say it, but... But... But what? My mother doesn't like your program, and she wants me to quit your show. Your... Your mother wants you to quit? Yeah. What does she like about my program? You. <laughs> me? Every time you say hello again, you ought to see the veins in her neck stick out. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Mary, you talk to him, will you? Not me. I'm enjoying this. You would. Dennis, you can go back and tell your mother that whether she likes me personally or not, you have a contract with me. He's got two years to run. Gee, two years. I don't think her neck will make it. I don't care if it does or not. Now, come on. I want to hear the song you prepared for the program. Well, what am I going to tell my mother? You don't have to tell her anything. I'll go over and talk to her. Gee, if my father was as brave as you, my mother would kill him. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Now, let's hear your song. Okay. Can't understand why his mother doesn't like me. I'm so gracious and modest, you know? a beautiful song and it'll sound swell on the program. Gee, thanks. By the way, Dennis, I heard you sing at the Academy Award ceremonies last night and your voice was never better. The audience thought you were wonderful. Then why did they give the award to Ronald Coleman? <laughs> Dennis, go get a bagel out of the icebox and roll it around the block, will you? Why do you all... Mary, answer the phone, will you? Okay. Hello? Hello. Hey, is that you, luscious Libby? <laughs> Yeah. Hello, Phil. How you live? Hey, what's going on at Jackson's house? I passed there a little while ago, and there were big searchlights all over the place. What's the celebration? A new washing machine. <laughs> a new washing machine? Well, rub-a-dub-dub. -dub. <laughs> Phil, you want to speak to Jack? Yeah, is the old gentleman at home? <laughs> uh-huh. Well, prop him up and hold the receiver for him. <laughs> Jack. Thanks. Hello? Hello, Wong Fu. How's your hot water holding up? <laughs> Never mind, Phil. What'd you call me about? Oh, I got good news, Jackson. I'm going on a fishing trip tonight, and I thought maybe you'd like to go with me. I'd love to, Phil, but I got to make a speech tonight at a very important meeting. Ah, it's too bad. I hate to go fishing by myself. Why'd you take Frankie with you? Nah, 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 you don't. The last time I went fishing with Frankie, spoiled the whole trip. Really? Yeah, there we were out on the lake, and Frankie wanted some sunshine. So he took his shirt off and let it fall in the water, and it sank to the bottom. All right, so Frankie dropped his shirt in the water. How'd that ruin your trip? The corkscrew was in his pocket. <laughs> My, what a disaster. 
Certainly. There we were with all them fish to eat and nothing to float them down with. <laughs> well, I can't understand you. Even on a fishing trip, you got to take a bottle along. Well, we just take it for emergencies, you know, to prevent colds, like in case it rains and we get all wet, then we uh, take a little nip. <laughs> Only, only when you get wet, eh? Yeah, but in case it don't rain, we push each other out of the boat. <laughs> what? Jack, what are you talking about? Oh, Phil wants me to go fishing. That's how my father met my mother. What? Yeah, my mother was a hostess on a live bait barge. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> hey, how about it, Jackson? Do you want to go fishing with me? <laughs> hey, uh, you better think it over. We might catch a mermaid. A mermaid? You know, one of them things that's half dame and half halibut. <laughs> oh, Phil, stop with the joke. You know that a mermaid is a myth. Well, myth or misses. If I catch one, I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Harris, you're just like a catfish. All mouth and no mind. <laughs> that I won't argue with. Well, do whatever you want, Phil. I can't go. Okay, so long, Jackson. So long, Phil. Hey, Phil, wait a minute. Yeah? If you happen to catch one, ask her if she's got a friend for me. Oh, Dad, you're a clip. <laughs> so long, Jackson. Hello? You know, Barry, Phil's going... Oh, hello, fish. Jack. I came in while you were on the phone. Oh, hello, Don. I was just talking to Phil, and he wants somebody to go fishing with him. Maybe you'd like to go. Oh, no, I'm not so good at it. Last summer, I bought a rod and everything, and every time I'd cast out, I'd hook my belt buckle. Gee, I wish I could cast that far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, look what time it is. I better get to that meeting. Well, Jack, I brought the sportsman over to let you hear the commercial. Oh, got just a minute? Well, yes, Don, if you hurry it up, because I really have to rush away. I don't want to be late. This meeting is very important. Oh, it, it won't take long. Well, what is the commercial, Don? Well, Jack, since this is the first day of spring, we prepared Mendelssohn's spring song, and the boys want you to work with them on your violin. On my violin? Good, good. Rochester, where's my violin? Under the piano! Oh, yes, I'll get it. <laughs> there it is. Okay, Don, I'm ready. Take it, fellas, Mendelssohn's spring song. You start it, Jack.
Don, Don, that was just... I'm so glad they asked me to be in on that, you know? You know, I can't wait till we... Uh, Boss, you better hurry or you'll be late for that meeting. Oh, yes, yes. So long, fellas. Goodbye, Mary. I hate to go, but this meeting is important. <laughs> weekly meeting of the Beverly Hills Beavers is now in session. <laughs> the secretary will read the minutes of the last meeting. Go ahead, Joey. Yes, Mr. President. Last week's meeting of the Beavers was called to order by Stevie, our president, and the first motion put before the Beavers was resolved. The constitution of the Beavers shall be amended so that we shall refuse membership to girls, communists, and little brothers. <laughs> this was passed unanimously. The meeting was interrupted by Cliff coming in late. Just a minute, Mr. Secretary. Cliff, why were you late to last week's meeting? My mother had a baby and I had to take care of my father. <laughs> well, that's a good excuse, but don't let it happen again. <laughs> uh, proceed with the minutes, Mr. Secretary. The most important business of last week's meeting was the holding of our presidential election. Stevie nominated Joy for president, Joy nominated Willie, and Willie nominated MacArthur. <laughs> but Stevie was elected president, and the meeting was then adjourned. Are there any amendments to the minutes? Minutes accepted as read. Is there any new business? Yes, Cliff. Mr. President, I would like to say something in connection with my office as Keeper of the Club mascot, Blinky, our white mouse, who <laughs> died two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Cliff, what's the motion? Well, my mother says that either we bury Blinky or someone else will have to keep him in their house. <laughs> Cliff, we'll take that up at the next meeting. Blinky ought to last another week. Okay, but can I move him from under my pillow? <laughs> if you want to. Is there any more new business? Now we come to one of the most important moments in the entire history of our club. Our first guest speaker. We are honored to have with us this evening the greatest fullback that Yale ever had. <laughs> the first man to swim the English Channel. <laughs> and the man who in 1943 recaptured Guadalcanal. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> Mr. Jack Benny. <laughs> Mr. President. <laughs> Mr. Secretary. And fellow beavers. <laughs> I... <laughs> I have given a lot of thought to the subject of my talk tonight. And finally, I've selected a topic which should be near and dear to all our hearts. I'm going to speak to you tonight on thrift. <laughs> Friends, thrift is one of the greatest virtues and should be started when you're young. Here, here. As you go through life, you'll hear many proverbs. One of the most important is a penny saved is a penny earned. Now, it's true that when you practice thrift, some people may ridicule you. They call you miser, cheapskate, or tightwad. Here, here. <laughs> huh? Oh, oh, pardon me. <laughs> But don't let that bother you. It never bothered me. So do not underestimate the importance of saving. Of course, it can be overdone. And one should remember that there are some things more important than money. Now, are there any other questions? Yes, Stevie? Mr. Benny, you said it's important to start saving money at an early age. How old were you when you started saving? Stevie, I was just a little boy. I'd save a penny here, a piece of wampum there. <laughs> It's amazing how it mounts up. Any other questions? Yes, Joey. Mr. Benny, how can we raise more money for our club? Well, boys, if you want to increase your treasury, you must get more members. 
gee, we've got every fellow our age in this neighborhood. That is, everyone but Roger Lowell. Roger Lowell? Yeah, he's the kid who lives in the great big house on the, on the corner with all the servants. Oh, those Lowells. Yeah, his family is the wealthiest in town. Yeah, all Roger does is sit home all by himself, playing with his electric trains and chemical set and bicycle and television set and microscope and erector set. Gee, isn't he lonely? Lonely, but loaded. <laughs> Well, fellow beavers, if there are no further questions, that will conclude my talk, and it was a great pleasure to be here. Thank you, Mr. Benny. And before you go, we'd like to give you our club cheer. Come on, boys. One, two, three. For he's a jolly good beaver. For he's a jolly good beaver. For he's a jolly good beaver. He helped us build our dam. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, fellas. I'll leave you now and let you conduct the rest of the meeting by yourself. So long. Goodbye, Beaver Benny. <laughs> Gee, he's a nice fellow. He sure is. Yeah, but when's he gonna pay his dues? <laughs> I forgot something. My hat. <laughs> Here it is. Goodbye, boys. For I'm a jolly good beaver. For I'm a jolly good beaver. For I'm a jolly good beaver. And I'm losing all my fur. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, the American Red Cross is in the midst of one of its most important campaigns to continue helping our hospitalized veterans to say nothing of its many other services to our communities. Please give generously to your local Red Cross chapter. Thank you. Jack, we'll be back in just a minute, but first, here's Basil Risedale. Independent tobacco experts again name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike, first choice over any other brand. The famous Crossley Poll has just completed an impartial survey in 11 southern tobacco states. This poll, taken amongst the tobacco experts, reveals the smoking preference of the men who really know tobacco. Yes, for their own personal smoking enjoyment, independent tobacco experts again name Lucky Strike, first choice. Lucky Strike, first choice over any other brand. These are the experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen. And we believe their overwhelming preference for Lucky Strike has a direct relationship to the quality tobacco we purchase for Luckies. You've heard the poll results. Now listen to what Mr. James Ball, ace tobacco auctioneer from North Carolina, recently said. Season after season, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy a fine, ripe, mellow leaf. I smoke Lucky's 29 years. So for your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, remember LSMFT, LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Ladies and gentlemen, don't miss the Phil Harris Alice Faye show on Sundays and a day in the life of Dennis Day on Wednesdays. And be sure to listen to this program next week when we'll have three guest stars. Three guest stars? Yes, Ronald Coleman, Benita Coleman, and little Oscar Coleman. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.